God, you're my everything. You're God over everything. Oh, Jimmy, no more. It is all done your way. My one and only true love is for you. I give it all to you. Oh, Jimmy, no So you need to understand that every day with the package God has for us as a matter of truth if we had a powerful man of God preach, preach to us this past Sunday and we have a service today Sunday couldn't have been better today no because whatever you needed till now Sunday had provided it but what you will receive today is for today and for the days ahead until another dose comes again and so Proverbs 4 18 it said for the part of the just shineth what brighter and brighter unto the perfect day and so every day God adds up hallelujah and so today will be better than yesterday better than Wednesday better than Tuesday better than Monday because of the word of God in addition to that the man of God has also been going to Nigeria Dunamis for some time now years now never misses conferences at the time we were after the convention um, we were about three of us that um, the pastor led us to see Dr. Paul prayed for us he was among those who were called because he played uh, a more important role than even me during Dr. Paul's coming. He was in charge of, um, in terms of coordinating. He was coordinating, making sure that the posters were set. He would go to Nima, Newtown, get them, um, bring them, uh, just roaming like that. Sometimes going to lorry stations, supplying them, and then it would go to Tamaleho and all of that play very important role as a matter of on the first day of the of the Accra crusade pastor victor realized that we needed um, a big banner he was sent just roaming left right center at the point people thought he was a dynamic pastor uh, who was uh, like the assistant to pastor george kinsley at the time very very instrumental hallelujah and uh, among the sons of the prophet also in ghana uh, he's, he's one of the key administrators he is we, we 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 put it upon him and he's the secretary of the <laughs> of the esco of the executives and so, very 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 committed very dynamic i told him he shouldn't come and preach he shouldn't be former he should come and talk out of the depth of what god has given him amen i think in a year or two time if I'm not mistaken, latest within four years, he should be 50 years of age. Yeah. You see, you need to know who is coming to speak. So he's handsome. Yeah. <laughs> amen and amen. And uh, God called him. And since then, it has been God throughout. How many of you have heard of um, Bishop Wale Oke? Yes, um, a few of us. Bishop Waloke is a friend to Bishop Oedipo. They are the Bishop Oedipo's class of fathers. And Bishop Waloke has raised many persons. And he was one of the pastors of Bishop Waloke. Could enter his room. Bishop Waloke will instruct him and all that. Till he was released to come to Ghana to start his own work. Um, some of the fathers he had. Because of Bishop Waloke, he had privilege to meet them pray with him so he's come to share knowledge and so i'm not surprised that among many subjects in the word of god the subject of prosperity he can teach it but he didn't catch the mantle he has an anointing for it but he doesn't have a mantle for that faith god didn't branch that area to him but i don't know why god chose that place sexual intimacy anointing <laughs> amen and amen some of you, if I say sexual intimacy, I'm not intimidated by your face. Oh. 
your 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 holiness face is trying to repair what I'm trying but how my how are you at all? <laughs> amen and amen. He's an author of several books. Listen to the titles of the books. One, taming the beast that targets the best. Second book, sex with sense. Third book, sex excellence. Fourth book, the uncommon strength of a woman. Fifth book, the real test of manhood. Sixth book, sexual wisdom. Seventh, practical ways of, of understanding sex. Is it is his mantle? <laughs> amen and amen. And so, he, God will use him to, yes, help us to understand everything we need to know, not only about sex but relationship. Hallelujah. So, man of God. Um, like I know you, don't stand behind the pulpit and preach. Walk, walk, talk. Talk to us. And the Lord will help us. Anybody having challenged, the Lord will deliver that person. In the mighty name of Jesus. All the way from the place of the blessing ministries. Help me welcome God's servant, Pastor Jed, Solomon, Jonah. Let's do it better out to the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah please if you are clapping for jesus can it be bigger and better hallelujah praise god uh, i'll quickly go into um um our, our 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 time so that we'll maximize time please you may be seated god bless you um, um what really transforms men is platform mm, you know you you can share dream in your father's house you can um um, interpret dream in Potiphar's house you can even be in prison and be interpreting dream but when you arrive at the palace the platform changes so I, I thank God for this platform and I believe that it's, it's a privilege I don't consider myself to be better than anybody but I think I have I've given myself to this grace and then um, it's not to, to brag by all humility um, the area of sexual immorality, I didn't choose it. God chose it and put it on me. I don't even know how it comes about. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I, I, found, I found out that it is Satan's greatest weapon from time immemorial. And um, as long as we are in his domain, he will always use it against us. You know, so I am grateful for this privilege. Mommy, everybody, I appreciate leadership, the mighty men, and um, our reverend. I send them greetings from my wife. My wife would have wanted to be here, but for some reasons. And she also likes when I talk about these things, because when we go back home, she'll say, How do you, where do these things come from? <laughs> Hallelujah. But I, I'm, I'm grateful to God. So some of those, those are some of the few books. There, there is a book um, uh, that is about to be a basic occupational sexual sense. And then um, <laughs> there's the A to Z of sexual wisdom. Mm. How you simple A to Z of sexual wisdom. I don't even know how. Like today I've, I've, I've sat down and I've written a whole devotional. Now the devotional has come out every month. So I get to write them. I, I promise um, the house... Um, the, the excellent house that once i'm through with packaging sex excellence everybody in the excellent house has a free gift from me everybody from pastor to the least praise god so everybody will have it because you saw what it is positive sexual values that unleash personal excellence positive sexual values you know when we talk about sex some people think is uh, is no the problem is that it is what the church is supposed to teach but we we relegate it you know parents who tell their children you are not grown up enough uh, you are too young and then I, I tell my children everything like my son is 15 this afternoon he was he, he was walking around the house just wearing his his boxers and i said oh boy you are no longer three you are no longer three years. I have daughters here. I have three daughters. My daughter is 14. And then my little girls, I say, please, oh boy, wear trousers. 
<laughs> wear trousers. We <laughs> please wear trousers to help my daughters. You know, but parents often think that it doesn't mean anything. It means a whole lot. Praise God. But I want to look at something tonight, and I pray that God will give us grace as we look at it together. Let me want what you want, oh my dear Lord. Let me love what you want, oh dear Lord. That is how it is to be born. Father, tonight we ask that your spirit just brood in this place. Let strongholds be broken. Let lies be reversed. Let truth shine forth. Let understanding come. Let our lives never remain the same again. Spirit of the living God, invade this place. Shake this house and shake out everything that needs to be shaken out and let your name be glorified we ask that everything that will be done here come under the blood thank you for the platform thank you for the word thank you for the mandate that you have given to this house let the grace that you have put on my life bring forth a shift and bring forth that which you expect for this meeting to evolve with in the name of jesus and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Please, can you jam your hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor had given me authority to just be free. So tonight, I'll start with something I call the sincere sexual question. SSQ. The sincere sexual question. And I want um, married people to volunteer and then single people to volunteer. I want us to be real. I want us to be real, 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 as real as real. So, I want um, three married people, please. Maybe men, women. Let's be quick about it. Maybe a man. A, yes, yes, they should come. They should come because we want to really. <laughs> Pastor, I like the way you are calling them. <laughs> yes, please, please. Married, just come, come. Okay, yes. Yes, thank you. I like the spice. One woman. Then um, I want three single people to come forward to. Please, daddy, come this way, daddy. I, I like the gray hair and then the the mixture. Oh, the, please, the combination. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. So I want um, single, three singles to, to three single people. Mm, three single people. So that we'll start with that. I'm, I'm going to ask very realistic questions. Very, very realistic questions. Yes, I, I like this poncho guy. Yeah. yeah, he looks very... Yes, so, so please, I want one more. I want one more. And then please, somebody help me with the microphone. 
yes please you help me and i'm i want very sincere answers please is, is your wife here okay thank you so is a good one is your husband here is your husband here yes. where's your husband <laughs> where's your husband so let us see oh god bless you sir okay where's your wife she's here okay thank you i, I like that too okay so what we'll do is i will, I will just ask you a question it, it may throw you off balance but i like to be realistic because mm. i like to deal with practical things you know i will ask it now some people will behave as if they don't know what we are saying but please just don't worry it's be sincere and if you are sincere god likes your sincerity you understand because most times people come to church and they behave as if they don't see what is happening on social media they also behave as if they don't have phones they come so piously and live more wickedly you see so i i want i want us to really look at these things so the question please and i said i said it to throw your balance but please don't just just um so it goes to the ladies first and uh, the lady please so um does the size of your spouse sexual organ make any difference to you no 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 i i want to know i want to really ask uh, does the size of your husband's sexual organ mean anything to you <laughs> no you're taking our time <laughs> no 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 i want <laughs> no does it mean anything does it make any difference Oh, time, 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 so that we can move on. Mm, time, time, please. Mm -hmm. Is it, does it mean? Does it make any difference? No, it doesn't. It doesn't make any difference. Eh? I don't understand the question. I heard somebody say, "Abua, abua." <laughs> no, what I mean is, your husband. Okay, let's let's say it like this. Should break it for you. Okay? Yeah, I should break it down. Your husband's penis, the size. Does it mean? Does it make any difference to you? This is yes. a simple question, yes or no? Yes. Uh, yes. I like you. God bless you. Okay. So now, give to the man. Mm -hmm. So please, my brother, would you agree for your spouse to have a frontal enhancement and a buttocks encouragement no. if there is no side effect? No. Do you understand what I mean? That's for the front to come out small and the back to go out if there is no side effect. No. Because one lady improved her own and got into the airplane because of the pressure in the air, it busted. <laughs> yes, really, it, it, it blew. Because so it, you don't, you, no, you prefer her the way she is. You prefer her the way she is. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so that is the same question. But now you're. you're I, mean, I don't prefer that. You, you don't prefer that? No. Me. You want it to be encouraged? Yes, because if the stomach is big, I don't like. I want flat stomach. Oh, no. What we mean front, that's the, the chest, the, the chest. breast. You want it to be bigger? No, 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 no. Eh, you, small one. Small one. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Please, can we clap for them? Thank you. Please, can we clap for them? Oh, please, sit stand here. Eh. Yes. Okay, you have microphone. So, my sisters, uh, we have two sisters, and very quickly, so that we'll move on. I want to just dive you something. Question for single sisters. If your spouse to be told you they had an organ enlargement as they enlarged their, their penis, what will be your response? The person who wants to marry you tells you that he had a penis enlargement. What will be your response? No, no, no. <laughs> Let's hear her. Mm. Um, it's fine. It's fine. Okay very sincere answer i like that so my sister yes yeah, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> okay now please give uh, uh, God. let me ask poncho his own question then you still stand there and then i will explain certain things to you okay um the brother if your spouse to be told you they had frontal and backside improvements will it excite you or embitter you Will it excite you or the girl told you 
that what she has in her buttocks is a, a, a tight that has foam that increase her buttocks. You, you, Debbie, you, you won't be happy. Foam, says, foam. <laughs> he said, foam, says, I said, what kind of thing is that? Okay. Now, please stand there. Why I'm asking this? Please, everybody, please listen. Please listen at them. Why I'm asking this is, we have um, a, an advert that had hit the social media and even pranks of where people are busy asking for um could you you could you could increase your your organ and all those and all that now why i ask this question in the church is because the church seems to behave as if they don't go to the social media now if before you got married i'm giving an instance you didn't you never met any man before you don't know the woman likewise doesn't know any man there are no expectations there are no expect you just came table arasa open mind you have never slept with joseph neither have you met him um, anthony you just came as a child of god so you don't have any expectation Inspe sorry expectation because what happens today sorry to say even in church marriages is that people get married and 10 people and uh, almost 24 people are on the bed because past experiences land on that bed from the man past experiences land from the bed from the woman and what is happening there is a conflict of consequences and catastrophic calamities of emotional dimensions so they begin to ask themselves why did he not carry my leg like this why did he not do me like that you know why because you have been committing fornication before you came now my sisters the simple question is since you say it doesn't mean anything to you does that mean that when you get married i'm very serious you will tell your husband to go and enlarge his organ no. so when he told you that he enlarged his organ as a christian sister it didn't mean anything to you it, it did it bothered but that is the choice i have made so no you have not married him yet not yet no you have not i said you people are not married you are still single okay. he just told you not as a husband that's why i said you are a single so what will you do as a single lady if he told you? If had, okay, once we are not married, I'll ask him his reasons for mm. doing that. Yes. And if that was a, a necessary thing for him. Okay, excuse me. What can be necessary? Um, what can be necessary that will make him enlarge his organs? Uh, um, I think people have psychological problems with um, body dysmorphic. Mm. So they think that um, um, probably a woman he had met me she had, he had met before thank you stop hold it there do you see the problem a woman he has met before why will a, a woman want a man who will shift her womb as if she wants to lose her womb did you did you hear what i said why would you want that you see what she said now eh? <laughs> no why i'm saying that is you hear what she said now that a person she met before somebody you met before you see now he, he 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 has done that and now wants to dump it on our sister you have seen just sexual organ enlargement you have not seen mental disorder you have not seen psychological trauma you have not seen regret and guilt so that's why there is a problem in the church when it comes to sex because that alone should send an alarm to you that this man is not a marriageable material. He's either a baggage, a wreckage, a usage, a, a, a carriage, or a damage. <laughs> you know there are different kinds of marriage. Some is baggage. You carry the, the man all your life, or the man carry you all your life. Or it's a carriage. You know, carriage, one person is shaking the horse, the other person, like Queen Elizabeth, is sitting like this. <laughs> so that's a signal that something is wrong. That's a signal. But yet, you see, my sister has said, maybe he had, no, maybe there is no maybe in a journey that is for life. As much as you can. So give to my sister. So you, you said also, if he did it, you, it's okay. Why do you accept it? that is his decision 
Okay, to make. Yes. Mm. Now both of you are coming to join together as husband and wife. Tomorrow his decision will be that you should enlarge your buttocks. Will you take it? I, I, I want to really make people understand what marriage means. Now somebody has taken a decision that is a destruction coated in, in trousers and wearing belts and you want to take it no i don't know you want to take it no 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 any there are antecedents that shows you that somebody is not marriable if there's any word like that that the person is not marriable if for any reason he enlarge his his organ tomorrow he will fry the hair on his chest and you will be, be you will be telling yes no no that's the truth It will tell you that you, they need to remove your breast and do plastic surgery so that it will look like Beyonce's own. Then you have a problem. So what we are saying is at the, at the initials, as a single person, when it begins, that's why there is something called pastoral counseling. You go to your pastor say, Pastor, look at what this man said. Though. No, that's true. You can't tell him. The man said he did um, um, organ enlargement to marry who? With an enlarged organ. Since you want organs to be enlarged, go to people who want that. Or did you enlarge your organs? Bible says, Bible says that God hates on just balance. That's why scripture says that you should not marry an unbeliever. Please, can we clap for them? I think we are done. Thank you. I appreciate you. Please, I appreciate you. God bless you. Did you understand the essence of what we did? This, you, you can't teach all this thing in one day. But you have just gotten a tip of the iceberg. How it is that when you are, when you are, are in courtship, when you are in courtship, it is not time for you to be enjoying. Go, you went to Barcelona, you went to Tasselos, you went to Bobos, Robo, you went everywhere. Without allowing something that is qualitative to come out of the preparation period ask direct questions scrutinize people listen to them listen to what they are saying then glean from it and come and meet pastor say sir, sir please look at what this person said a lady told the story of how she went they went through counseling in dunamis very the man was a gentleman but she kept asking god god please show this man to me and then there she was she had a dream where the man was smoking and drinking in a dream 2 a.m she got up from the dream and took her phone and called the man. Immediately she called the man and said, please, tell me who you are. The man said, ah, well, this one you have asked. Let me be sincere with you. I have children outside. Hey! They were about to wed and he came out with that shocker that they have children outside. So I just did this to show us a little example of what is happening out there. Let me be sincere with you. Organ enlargement is not necessary. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. It's not. Believe me. The way a human body is structured, the woman, no matter how, how big or how she is, the husband God has given to her, the husband that God has given to her, where pleasure is derived is with the communication that comes every morning when they wake up. A woman doesn't want your organ to be like the pole of an electric. What he wants is for your love to be genuine. For your care to touch her. It, you'll be shocked that the moment you touch the woman, she will melt. The essence of, of communion between a husband and a wife, for those of us who are here, is to come to the place of conjugal bliss. Where the woman is relieved and the man is refreshed. So, it is a job for the man to be able to satisfy the emotional longing of that man. That's why you don't, you don't, uh, you, you are married. You don't carry your boot by 9 a.m. You start jogging in the morning by asking her, how are you? Did you sleep well? Uh, did, did you understand what I said? <laughs> I said you don't carry your boot by till 9. And start wanting to enter the football match. No, it's too late. 
there is a referee you can't change you can't enter that time it's in the morning when she's going to work how are you have you arrived the office oh honey, how is the office oh wow what did you eat well, by the time you start saying this thing the woman will become like paulina <laughs> hallelujah so what i'm saying is i believe that we have understood this so when we see it out there, I'm not saying it for saying sake. When we see out there, let's refute it. Let's stand against it. Let's tell them this thing doesn't make it doesn't make it doesn't make love real. It doesn't make life better. It doesn't bring intimacy. It doesn't bring intimacy. Whether they are pranks, Satan is a very deceptive, deceptive uh, uh, devil. He will throw everything and unconsciously the church is swallowing it. No, we won't take that. Are you hearing me? My sisters, my sisters, my brothers. Don't enlarge anything. Enlarge the love in your heart. Enlarge the love in your heart. Enlarge the love of God in your heart. So very quickly, this evening, we're looking at something, and I'll be very fast. We're looking at sexual wisdom for, for a winning singles and married life. Sexual wisdom for a winning singles and married life. Very quickly, Genesis chapter 3, 24 to 4 verse 1. Quickly, please, so that we can run. Genesis 3:24 to 4:1 Sexual wisdom for a winning singles and married life So he drove out of the man yeah and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims mm. and a flaming sword which yeah. turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life Yes and Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said I have gotten a man from the Lord Thank you now, if you look at that scripture, you notice that Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, there was nothing like intercourse between Adam and Eve. I didn't say it, but we said it. If not, they would have conceived before they chased them. You, you understand me? They would have, there would have been a conception. But at that point, the glory was so much. Now, you find out that there was a wisdom behind this that you see adam and eve it was when situation had gone wrong that they were they were brought out of the garden that they now had to console themselves with the fact that they had communion they had intercourse that's why the bible didn't say that adam and steve conceived did you hear what i said what adam and steve he didn't say that Eve and Evangelina conceived. We must go back to the world. So you see that there, it was very clear that Adam, who was first produced or created, let me use the word created, please pardon me, was a single man until Eve was created. Are you following me? Now, at the time that Eve was created, the two of them were now brought to the place of intercourse. So, if you are a single and you mingle, you will be mangled. Did you hear what I said? Now, what that means is that there are things that you get involved with that you may never recover from. I can prove that to you. I said if you are a single and you mingle, you will become what? Mangled. And if you're a man and you, you're a woman and you get involved with adultery, you become adulterated. Things just go wrong. Now, because of time, I want to quickly look at this. Sex is, is, is of course, everybody knows the devil's greatest tool in our generation. Even a common battery, they will put a woman that is naked as if they use battery to start a woman. Or whether a woman, I don't know which one. No, they just, everything today is selling sex. And the, the enemy is deliberate and intentional. He is very, very deliberate and intentional. You saw the book, the, the real test, the, the uncommon strength of a woman. That book is simply based on the understanding of the advantage of a woman. Now, the advantage of a woman is her, her, her distance from the proximity of a male person or a male voice. So you can you may not be seeing somebody physically. But you are having you, you are you are Facebooking adultery, you are tweeting immorality. 
so you 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 keep yourself that's why husband and wife can be living in the same and the wife is having an affair not a conscious affair but she had reconnected with her school boyfriend he's married she's married and then emotions are rising you know that with god it is not the act it is the heart it is what it is the heart so just um was in adam was first a single person and grew to become married never forget that the bible didn't tell us yes he said the first day the days where we cannot understand i step i said for for seven years like pastor was saying um two three years from be fifty years but now imagine oh if you are clapping clap for jesus please hallelujah now but look at what i'm saying i've been married for 17 years before i got married i was single for seven years that is almost like 24 years for those 24 years by the grace of god i had never had sex with any other person except my wife i have never sent anybody a text please meet me there and he failed you know there are people i have not even i have not even seen <laughs> i said i've never sent somebody a text before meet me here and the thing didn't work maybe god stopped it no i had not even in sincerity look you know there is a there is an issue i want to tell you the sincere truth when temptation comes with who you don't like it, it looks like it's not temptation but what of if it's the person you like so even the ones that i like i refuse not to like them because real strength is seeing what you can take and refusing to take it because of what you have taken you have taken Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. So now, um, I, I like this guy, but this guy cannot bring the, you know, a barrier between me and my Jesus. So you let it go. So Abraham, Adam, sorry, was single. And in this single, I want to bring out certain necessary, very quickly, real life, um, um, how do I put it now? real life necessities basic sexual wisdom that a single person should have and i'll run through them quickly and then we'll look at what a married person should also have sexual wisdom and i think we are done for the night praise god so very quickly basic sexual winning wisdom for singles number one every single person must see sex as spiritual because it was created by the father of all spirits when he created your organs every single person must see sex as spiritual every single person must see sex as spiritual please what that means is that don't think that you had a fling i had a lady who, who told me pastor the way this young man is disturbing me let me just go to abujang and just i know he loves me but let me just sleep with him let him let us rest <laughs> so when you sleep with him your unrest just began your unrest just did what just began because sex is a spiritual transaction what it does is it, it carries it invites demons and devils from the person you slept with that you were not trained to battle and mix it with the one from your village it's because the moment you open yourself to sex you have announced to all those things that jesus delivered you from that you are now free for them to come back so when these people join together the problem becomes more difficult so it's a spiritual thing so you must understand that sex is spiritual it's not i love him the most bastardized word is love for a woman love is sex affection let me show him love let him stay with me that's in that man you did you have just satisfied his physical longing that's why the next thing is wearing his trouser he, he, game over game over and you you are still there fantasizing dreaming about him People who live in fantasies don't know when they enter funerals. What I mean is, the person you think you have in your heart, eh? he has you on his heels. He's running away faster than you think. So you think you got a man. Meanwhile, the man just knew that he has used you. But in between the two people, Satan has fooled the two of them so sex is please as a single person let it sink into you that sex is very spiritual it is the easiest it is the the strongest transaction that anybody can ever make because it's the transference of of blood 
transference of blood. It's a covenant that, that is both the spirit, the soul, and the body. That's why the, 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 the scripture says in Corinthians, say, can you, how do you join yourself to a harlot? So the man becomes a harlot. The woman becomes a harlot. That's why you see him, he can't rest. He can't sleep until he has got to one person to, to, to penalize for the calamity. So first, they see sex as spiritual. And please, if it is spiritual, then value it for a spiritual union that has been blessed on the altar. I was reading a survey, they said that the world doesn't tell people of the emotional calamities of sex. They just tell them pregnancies, HIV, STDs, and then, then they forget that in America, more people have died out of committed suicide, young people, 16, 17 years. I read the survey. Do you Google it? Out of heartbreak that the boy, they thought they loved them, loved him, and the girl he felt loved him, that once they had sex, it looked like everywhere became dry. So the emotional turmoil, they went and committed suicide. Can you imagine? Somebody will say America. But here in Africa, people have killed themselves before they started living already. By those acts of immorality, they have killed themselves. So number one, sex is spiritual. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, we can read. Number two, sex is not to be experimental or else it will be detrimental. Sex is not to be experimental. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. I grew up as a child of um, a very wealthy man. So, in our house, we had like 10 girls, 20 boys. 10 girls, boys all over. My dad was into interior decoration, furniture, furnishing, and what have you. So, you know, every night, there's a lot of cat work in that house. Do you understand? <laughs> people crawling in the night to go and meet another girl this one crawling out another boy crawling in in that whole house ninjas ninjas my brother ninjas <laughs> that was where I grew up so by the time I was nine I was already molested imagine people living in a house giving me blue job do you know what a blue job means oh you know so by the time I was nine I was ready waking up with ladies all over me so I, I before I could I was 10 I had already started making having sex without any form of any any knowledge of what I was doing do you know that by the time I was 13 I had I had started the girls who were living with us at one point when I was 14 one of them I, you know because they had made me used to sex so even me, when everybody is crawling around, me too, I will crawl out. <laughs> everybody is crawling, so me too, I will crawl out. <laughs> and then go and look for one and catch. So one day I came to this lady and she said, don't come near me again, you have made me commit abortion four times. It didn't mean that much to me. I said, don't worry. She said, don't come near me. But later she came to look for me. That was my journey into the world of promiscuity. By the time I was 17, I would go to, because my dad was wealthy. He shows me where he keeps money. So he'll say, anytime you want money, just go here. So if I just go inside the, go inside the pocket, I just take what, put in my pocket, straight to the brother, me and my friends. Come and see. Women, different sizes. I was 16. By the time I was 17, I had gotten into the university. It was a free for girls everywhere. Now, why I'm saying this is, listen to me. Never experiment with sex. Why? If you get away with sex, you'll be tempted to live with it. You didn't hear me. If you get away with sex, whether you're a bishop, a pope, or if you get away with it, you'll be tempted to live with it. That's why people often, you see the man, they ask you, he's still having an affair. Even with the nature of the beauty of his wife, the commitment of the wife, the care of the wife, he's still in affair because he's now tempted to live with it. His experiment has become detrimental. Now, 
when you are a single per adventure you have been involved in sex it is time to call yourself to order zip your trouser close your leg game over did you hear what i said zip your trouser do what close your legs game over is an open leg is a scattered destiny scattered destiny many people never recover from it the whole of their life i can show you from scripture i can give you real life experiences I know a lady she wanted she was she was going out with a young man and this young man from the day young man said the young man said i like you like you and then i like you they went to his house they went out after then they they slept together enjoyed themselves in the middle of the night the guy came and started rolling marijuana and was rolling this heavy one the girl woke up in the middle with marijuana and said ah no i can't go out with this kind of person the boy said what the way i see you i love you if you don't love me i will kill you the guy thought the lady thought it was a joke so when the guy is now because she said no you look decent you work in government house but in the night well I can you are not about this your habit of smoking indian hemp and whatever i don't like it i can't the guy said if you don't marry me i will kill you she thought it was a joke one day 12 in the afternoon i'm telling you a real life story 12 in the afternoon this guy called her and asked her where she was she said she's in her office and the guy said i'm coming to your office do you know this guy arrived at office this office that you, you pull up the roll, this, this, these doors, these metal doors you pull up. He just got in and two men came with him and then he rolled it down. The first thing she saw was a machete. The first cut was on her head like this. Just tore her head. But you know it was God's mercy. That cut on her head, it, it, it lacerated the vein that sent signal to the body for pain. So they began to mutilate her. Cut her that's cut her in ways that are unbelievable they left her in a pool of blood what saved her before the people came a small boy was passing and said auntie auntie i want biscuits he said go and come so when the boy was coming back and saw that the door was closed the boy said how can auntie that says you go and come back to call biscuit now close auntie i don't like he looked under and saw her in her pool of blood and went to the neighbors and shouted they came and carried her she spent two years in orthopedic hospital two years after two years of suturing her up together that was when the the ability to to feel came back to her so it was god's lesson for her the lady i'm telling you she got married her husband died mysteriously you see when you think you're experimenting with sex it is detrimental to destiny it is detrimental to self please tell your neighbor don't experiment i said tell someone don't experiment look at somebody say don't experiment it is detrimental so why are we saying this i can tell you scores scores look at reuben the first son of david of um, jacob he experimented with his father's wife you know what the father told him the father told him reuben you are the excellency of might the excellency of dignity but um you will not excel what he just told him you have expired your experiment have expired you you know if you want a drug to be useless just expose it all the men you have been exposing your breast your leg is expiring you as i see people they take toes of time praying for a man to marry them but mercy will locate you i know you are not among them but i say mercy will locate you it is very detrimental to experiment with sex. Number three, build your strength for abstinence. You will, you will need it for your future and marriage. As a single person, please build your strength for abstinence. You will need it for your future and your marriage. What, did I, what do I mean? Train yourself now that you have the privilege to stay without sex until you get married. Because it will be very necessary when you get married. Ask those of us that are married. When our wives are pregnant at some point, you can have sex. You can have intercourse. When she delivers newly, you can have intercourse. So if you have not trained, or maybe when you now travel to Nigeria, like me, sometimes I travel for one month. One time I was in East Africa for one month. So, 
to train myself. Sometimes somebody says, is you only the men? No, even the women. Because we've always been told that women are moved by what they see. Men, sorry, are moved by what they see. It's a lie. Everybody is moved by what they see. Everybody is moved by what they see. Men see breast and buttocks. Women see cars, shoes, and money. Whatever it takes for them to look, they see it. That's why Delilah, <laughs> Delilah saw the money. He sold something. Delilah was not wicked. She loved something. But when they showed her the kubao, they showed her the malachi. She said, no, I've changed my mind. <laughs> they showed her the malachi. She said, I changed my mind. So she saw something. The man that she's dealing with saw her. Then the people that know what she will see and like, they showed her. So ask your neighbor, what are you seeing? <laughs> Some people are behaving like angels now. <laughs> they saw the boy the boy was walking like this they said ah <laughs> is this a human being or, or, or an angel I like this one no? they said, oh sorry please <laughs> the guy said don't mention are you staying around here are you looking for anything When people behave like this, they have not seen their temptation. <laughs> they have not seen their temptation. <laughs> so bad, just, nothing can stop me. You have not seen your temptation. It is when you overcome. <laughs> it is when you overcome your temptation, they will know that you have, you have, you have, you have. Some people now, when you see girl pass, they say, this, it's too short. It's too short. But when the girl is fair, ah, he enter his eyes. He catch his eyes. We bring out excellence house card which church do you attend hey. <laughs> i want to invite you to our church he wants to know the girl it's not evangelism it's love jealousy or lost jealousy the man is lost they should pray him back mighty man bring those kind of people back so build your strength for abstinence because your wife will menstruate your husband will travel there may be pregnancies delivery there may even be spiritual exercise some pastor sons can be in, in fasting in fasting inside the bush at Timota forest and god commit fornication on top of Timota forest because someone get pray and then he's he's doing as if he's praying with that he, He didn't know that that is Satan brought it. Because the exam you didn't pass as a, as a youth, you will receive it as a father. You will receive it as a father. I went to preach in Asankragwa, so they brought some girls to, to serve me. Pastor, come and see Jingle Bells. <laughs> the girl wanted to give me food. She's doing like this. <laughs> so I said, Sister, stand up. <laughs> Sister, stand up. Stand up. Go outside first. I pick my phone. I call my host. I say, please, which kind of devils did you... <laughs> which kind of devils did you bring to come and serve me food here? He said, Pastor, I didn't know. I said, you didn't know. Don't you know that you will not bring this type of people? Those are the types that you see when if the pastor is not controlled. It's great, so I'm telling you. Say, wow, sit down the bed. Ow. Let me minister to you. <laughs> Let me minister to you. So I told him, I said, he said he didn't know. I said, no, you must be observant. That's why I like the way you send my team to come and bring a, 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 a man in. That's some 30 day sense, sister. They begin to twist like Coke bottle. <laughs> that they are carrying many of them in a, in a, in a container. They'll be shaking everywhere. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> You're putting the man of God in many troubles. Compounding his sorrows. <laughs> so train yourself. No, it's important. Even though we're laughing, but train yourself. Learn it. Learn it. You know, listen to me. They told David, they told David, please listen. 
David came and he said he wanted something from the man of God. The man of God said, have you kept yourself from women? First Samuel. How many of you know the story? Where he got Goliath's sword. The question they ask is, have you people kept yourself from women? He said, yes. For days now, we have been... He knew the, the situation. Knew the situation. Please, advise your neighbor. Say, keep yourself. I said, tell somebody, say, keep yourself. Tell somebody, learn to keep yourself. <laughs> learn to keep yourself. No, please, tell somebody, learn to keep yourself. It will help you in the future. Hallelujah. Praise God. So very quickly, basic sexual wisdom and winning wisdom for singles. We said number one, sex is spiritual. Be very, very spiritual about it. Number two, we said sex cannot be, it's not to be experimented with. Number three, we said build your strength for abstinence. Build your strength for abstinence. To abstain. Do exercise. Do press up on abstinence. Build your abstinence muscle. Because you will need it when you are married. Number four, Sex is not a proof of affection. If not, you will be a fool for love. And think you are full of love. Sex is not a proof of affection or attention. Sex is not a proof of affection or attention. If not, you will be a F-O-O-L for love. And think you are F-U-L-L in love. You are full of love. Please. Especially the women. Don't let have you eaten this night. Are you about to sleep? Where are you now? Are you lying down? Have you taken your bath? Have you brushed your teeth? Have you worn your nightgown? Anybody who is asking you that kind of question and is not your husband is sent of the devil. Ask him who sent you. Did you hear what I said? What did I say? Ask him, who sent you? When you are single, you don't have time for affection and unnecessary attention. When somebody is following you home and he saying, let me hold your bag for you. Your bag is not a bag of cement. Hold it yourself. You know why? These affections and attention affect the woman, the lady later on as a single person. My assistant pastor is a lady, one of the, you know, one of the young men who, who are, are around me. When they are going, because he converted her, he will just carry his hand and put on her shoulder. Remove your hand, are you a devil? Yes, remove your hand, are you a devil? I want to say, let me tell you, you are a pastor. Eh? Don't let this handshake become wrestling. allow that as a sister you are going on your brother is passing carry him put on your waist for what has he paid bride price even if he has paid bride price has there been any you are you, you... <laughs> what i mean is that women are susceptible to touch if you now hold her like this then you come down like this <laughs> <laughs> How was the service today? How was the service today? It was beautiful. Oh, Pastor can preach. Oh. I, I like the way we were posing in there. Hey. <laughs> now, what is happening is he's sending shock waves into the sister. By the time the sister arrives home, where she's lying down, she says, Ah, that brother loves me. Mm. For where? <laughs> you know what he did? Borrow pose. What did I say? Borrow pose. What it means is he will do it to everybody and get the sister confused and begin to say, I thought he, he, he wanted to propose. The guy is just having a few days. But I know they are not in this church. Romance what? Who gave you the authority to romance? You only romance your wife. The only romance you are permitted to, ro to romance is to read the book of romance. From <laughs> Carry it on your head. Carry <laughs> All her 
have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Carry that one on your head. <laughs> Carry that one on your head. See everybody with the eyes of love until proven otherwise. So sex is not a proof of affection. Why I'm saying this, please, sisters, sisters, keep your body. It's your most valuable treasure. It's your most valuable treasure. Now, sometimes people say, what is it again my body has scattered? It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. There is something called secondary virginity. When you keep yourself in covenant, I am telling you, God will package you. Package you back in honor. Don't think you are wasted. Say, well, how old am I now? No. Prepare yourself. How many people say, how, how could, don't, don't worry. God doesn't count it. If you prepare yourself now, God will package you well. And even shock your enemies and take you and decorate a pastor. I had a friend like that. This lady was a hawker. Just, she was a sex worker. Everywhere, money, everything. And then all of a sudden, she got born again. And then she got close. I was taken out on evangelism. And then, you know, we kept talking. And then all of a sudden, she understood what I, because I made a covenant with God. It's covenant that helps. You must be deliberate and intentional when it comes to this thing. So after a while, she caught it and then she kept herself. Do you know as I'm talking to you, she's married to a pastor. She's married to a pastor. Has three daughters, living well. So God will repackage you. I didn't say wants to. Will. If you are willing and obedient. Forget about what has passed. There is a secondary virginity that is available. Hallelujah. I think I thought you'd be clapping for Jesus. Hallelujah. So because of time, that's 2 Samuel chapter 15. Second Samuel. Sex is not a proof of affection. 2 Samuel chapter 13, 15 and 16 is about Tamar and um, Amnon. You know, the moment Amnon slept with Tamar, he said, go out from here. And Tamar said, the, in fact, this one you told me to go out now is even worse than the fact that you raped me. This one you told me to go out. So when Tamar saw that, ah, the way this my brother loved me is falling sick. Now he's pressuring me. I'm telling him you should go and meet Papa. Let us marry officially. But he refused. Okay. And if he, if he now forced me, maybe he, I will, I, he, uh, he will marry me. And then the guy forced her and sent her out like a commoner. Like a commoner. Like a commoner. She would have insisted and beat, bite him. Give him a bite. He will never recover from it. It's better they fight. That's why, that's why I, that book, that's why that book, The Uncommon Strength of a Woman, never feed a man in his bedroom. What are you looking for there? Did you hear what I said? When he's not your husband, brother is not feeling fine, you took breakfast in bed to him. You may land on the bed of fornication. If you are going to give him anything, carry two strong brothers. If you can fight with the two of them and, uh, and catch you then, you know that Satan entered him for real. So you, no, I'm telling you. So very quickly, number five, be deliberate and intentional about abstinence. Be very deliberate and intentional about abstinence. Be very what, de be deliberate about it. Choose to defend your, your sexuality with everything you have. Mark out territories. Put in, put in practical resolutions concerning abstinence tell yourself no i won't go to anybody's house to fry plantain until he has married me i won't go to cooking domi when people go to cooking domi they wear small nickel like this and be going about the house <laughs> don't go and cook indomi wear spaghetti hand cooking indomi And then you say that the brother should not, should not do anything. Brothers too, please, help yourself. Mean abstinence. I want you to hear this and never forget it. If your erection gives you direction, you will end in destruction. I'm talking to the brothers now. If your erection gives you direction, you will end in destruction. You look like I'm speaking Greek. Zagadis, Inyanto Jadas, Pekwatwala Karosh. 
So when it is your trouser that is directing your steps, you have entered trouble. So everybody being abstainers. I have a, a younger, a, a young, like a son and a friend. He went to a radio station and they were interviewing him. He said he's, he, he's a virgin. The radio host laughed him to scorn. That's the radio host laughed. Say you are a virgin. <laughs> In this Ghana. You are a virgin. <laughs> You will come and tell us how you are virginating it. They say he will come to the station and tell them how he's doing it. How he's this old, 20 something, 24 years, and he's still a virgin. And I like the boy. He said, Pastor, you will go with me. I said, I'm ready to go with you. I, let, let's finish those people. Since they, they, are, they are laughing at virgin, we will we'll, we'll, we'll show them what they have lost. We'll show them what they have lost. It's not this type of virgin that somebody says is a virgin. He has masturbated for 17 years you know when you are masturbating you are no longer a virgin you know why you have you have you have had intercourse with spirits masturbation is having intercourse with spirits because for you to make yourself to come to ejaculate you must you must bring a a a, a person to your mind and begin to walk in fact have sex with the person in your mind in the realm of your thoughts for you to masturbate whether you even a woman say I'm still a virgin and you are you are you are practicing masturbation. You are no longer a virgin. No. Cucumber is disveging some people, hey. banana or, or plantain is disveging some people. When you should carry your life and give it to a man and God will value, you first gave it to, to, to cucumber. <laughs> and uh, the, that vegetalize your destiny. you see them they never recover they never recover that's not a laughing matter i'm telling you the if you see if say i'm a virgin you are not a virgin you are a vegetable you see this <laughs> the thing shocks you guys the thing shocks the guy it shocked the guy pa <laughs> so please be deliberate and intentional james chapter 2 verse 25 Please be deliberate and intentional. It's very serious. You know why? Because if you are not decisive about it, you will fall for anything. Fall for anything. Be deliberate. And then when we say abstinence, please, even people who are married, choose to stay with one woman. Choose to stay with one man. It is better for you. Don't be a married prostitute. Oh, it's not in the Bible. Proverbs chapter 7. She says she had the attire of a harlot. And she was she said the good man is not at home. And she's dragging a young boy. And finish that boy's destiny. Very quickly, number six for singles. We said number one, sex is spiritual. Please treat it as so. Number two, sex is not to be experimented with. If not, you, you bring the detriments to your destiny. So ties, desolation and all manner number three we said build your strength for abstinence build your, it is not going to be automatic build it survive one week like somebody now you are living here you have made a covenant no man will see my leg until i get married now you stay the first one week you survived it now if any temptation come you tell yourself i've survived it for one week i shouldn't fall the second week you strength you muscle through it by the time it's one week one month one year then you, you'll be very very stupid to lose it again so you, you, you build on the strength and increase and increase. We serve a covenant keeping, keeping God. If you make that covenant, it will help you. Very quickly, number six, sex before marriage takes you from, takes from your future. It does what? It takes from your future. Sex before marriage takes from your future. When a person has sex before marriage, what he does is he goes to the person's future and takes the benefits, the profits. That's what happened to Reuben. He slept with his father's wife. You know what he missed? First Chronicles chapter five. I think First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter five, verse one and two. Please help us check either First Chronicles or Second. Yeah, look at it. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn, for he was the firstborn. 
But for as much as he defied his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the sons of, and the genealogy is not, reckoned, is, is not to be reckoned after the birthright. Now, read verse 2. Look at verse 2. He said, For Judah prevailed above, and, and of him came the chief ruler. These are the two things that were Reuben's own the chief ruler and the birthright. But because of immorality, they shared it. Jacob, Joseph took the birthright. Judah took the chief ruler. That's why Judah, from Judah, Jesus came. So you see, when people involve in sex, the future that is glorious, you just take it and well, you just bring it and give to Satan, and he will lick it as ice cream and give you the rubber. Pyaka, pyaka. Know that? Know that you be making noise without impact. Making noise without what? Impact. The future is gone. But we serve a God of restoration. I pray that today, God will restore. I said God will restore. So, they eat up their future. So, Genesis chapter 49, 3 and 4, and then 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 20. The Bible said that Tamar became desolate. That his own was finished in his father's house. There was nothing more. There was nothing more. Very quickly, basic sexual winning wisdom for the married. Please. Singles, listen to this, but don't practice it until you are married. All singles, listen attentively, but keep it in your armory until when you are married, you bring out the sword. So, I repeat, basic sexual, sexual winning wisdom for singles. Number one, sex is spiritual, Genesis 1, Number two, sex is not to be experimental or else it will be detrimental. So, you find soul ties, and desolation genesis chapter 34 verse 3 please dot your t's and cross your eyes cross your t's and dot your eyes number three build your strength for abstinence you will need it for your future romans chapter 8 verse 13 colossians 3 verse 5 hallelujah number four sex is not a proof of affection it will be a fool it will make you it will it will make you a fool for love hallelujah so our scripture is 2 Samuel chapter 13, 15 to 16. Number five, be deliberate and intentional about abstinence. Even if you had sex, you will still have secondary virginity. It's very possible. So G James chapter 2, verse 5. And then number six, we said sex before marriage takes from your future. And then that's Ruben, Ruben um, um, Genesis chapter 49, 3 to 4. And 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 20. So basic sexual winning wisdom for the marriage. Number one, talk about sex and flirt constantly with each other if you want sex to help your marriage intercourse to help your marriage talk about intercourse often and flirt with your spouse flirt with your spouse don't flirt with any other person flirt with your spouse praise the lord you know some some women when they get to the house they will dress as if they are going for world war ii <laughs> They will wear all manner of gadgets and cover themselves as if they are Muslim. <laughs> they are of the other religion. When you get to your house, since it is your house, eh, you enter Discovery Channel. Let your husband begin to discover mountains and hills that he should climb. That's why I say singles, close your ears. Don't just put it in your armory. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you, 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 you be free. Allow her to go everywhere. And then when your wife is passing, don't just be, don't be reading Bible. I said, we'll be reading newspaper, be pressing laptop. Don't be pressing laptop. There are things you should press. There are things you should press. It's not time to press laptop. Hallelujah. Are we still in church? No, it's, it's better told. Because these people, they will be doing movie to look like it's only sinners that are enjoying. It's a lie. It was created for the children of God. The, our own will do it with decency. Their own, they will be displaying it on TV. Making immorality look like it's a legality. Meanwhile, it's a sin. But in husband and wife, it, even Holy Ghost is happy. Even the Holy Ghost is happy. That you and your wife, you are, you are in union. Hallelujah. Flat constantly. Look at Proverbs chapter 5 verse 15 to 20.
Proverbs 5, 15 to 20. I want you to put it there, please, so that we can. He said, drink water out of thy own system. And running water out of thy own way. He said, let thy fountain be blessed. Verse 16, because of time. Let thy fountains be, ble- be dispersed abroad and rivers of water in the streets. Please, please, so listen. This is a warning. It isn't what it looks like. The original translation, it says, it says, don't allow. That's the original. This one, it, it says, but look at this. Let thy fountain be dispersed and rivers of water in the street. Go on. 17, say, look at the written. Say, let them be only thy own and not strangers with thee. 18. And let the fountains be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. This one that a house is looking like there is, there is okay. Let her be as the loving ha. Ah, no, don't worry. Close this one. Our sisters that are not married are here. Leave this one. Uh-huh. Put no go forward. 19. <laughs> let her be as the loving. Ah, no, 20. Hey. <laughs> And why would that my son be ravaged with a stray? You see one, you know. So let it be only your wife. And you will rejoice. Pursue her, chase her. The Bible says Adam cleaved to Eve. That cleave means he was chasing her. <laughs> he was chasing her. Doing hide and seek. When he see that the wife is coming from the kitchen, he will stay like this. As the lady is coming like this, we just can press one button. You were there. <laughs> That's what it should be. <laughs> so, talk about sex and flirts. Don't don't just be what happened in the service today, or the way that pastor can pray. The people in our office, they are all devils. Forget them. You have come back home. Forget them. Talk to your husband. Honey, how are you? How do you feel? Is there anything you need? Sure, affe- that is where affection is. That's where it should be. Hallelujah. My wife just walks in and says, ah, Daddy, is there any- how are you? I'll say, fine. I heard my father-in-law say, if he stays more, he'll just go and meet his wife. Any challenge? <laughs> the woman will say, no challenge. It's okay. <laughs> so me too, when I'm passing, I ask my... <laughs> Zagados, any andos as a is a gabados as a good. Now, when you keep the woman laughing like this, your life will be easy. Your life will be easy. So, number one, talk with them. Number two, be involved, be deliberate and intentional in intercourse proper. Be involved as a husband, be involved, be deliberate in intercourse proper. Be involved as a woman, be involved. I'm telling married women, no. sisters, don't be involved until you have, you have become involved. <laughs> don't be involved though, and the sister that is not married. It's because before you become dissolved. <laughs> uh, mom, you are married. Be involved. Be involved. <laughs> you are married. Be involved. Don't be involved. Don't be involved. <laughs> Don't be involved. Don't be involved. Don't be involved. Don't be involved. Don't say at the Lord. Don't be involved. Be involved. Be involved. When if you are married, you have worship in your phone. You cannot be playing. Uh, uh, what's her name again? Whitney Houston or, or what's uh, Bobby Brown? No, you don't need this kind of just with tiredness of my spirit. Oh, pull up! Ay, 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 ay. I am with the father. Oh, <laughs> hey, 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 when you put this kind of song, even the spirit. <laughs> The other people will say they are, they, they, they are really praying, you know. <laughs> say, Papa, Mama, this, this is warfare. Brutal warfare. 
So you 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 get involved. Are you there? So Proverbs six twenty four verse twenty five. So unfortunate that church people often think that it is it is wrong to talk to your spouse about how you feel. Please, singles listen. Tell your husband. Tell your wife. Tell whoever God has given to you in sincerity. I'm being sincere with you. This is where you touch me, I'll be happy. This is where you touch me, and I will be what? Be happy. Some people they will be busy rubbing their husband's head as if they are beating the man. <laughs> Leave his head, ask him where you will touch him. Will be. <laughs> Don't be rubbing the man's head as if you are the one that put oil on his head. Ask him where. Talk to your wife. Not anything you can you can buy her, you can buy her a pa. Ask her what 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 is your love language? What what will you like? You can buy gele for her. See if she's Madame Kofo. Ask her what do you like? What do you like? And the radio, she will say, take me out to Chinese. If you people go to Chinese, that night, Jackin Chan, Cha Kapala. Kung Fu Master. You will go to Hong Kong that night. <laughs> Hallelujah. So be involved. Be deliberate and intentional. You know they say that if you surprise a woman, she will like you. Please su surprise her instantly. Don't be waiting for her birthday. Surprise her. Coming back, put two sweets in your pocket. Two CD 50 pesos chocolate. Buy two. Buy two. When you come, me and you will live as one. Our love will last forever. Me and you. Me and you. You know, like this. Me and you will live as one. You'll be shocked that when you have gone to work, she will still be singing me and you will. <laughs> she will still be singing your love song. It will linger in her head. Men, women, do that. Number three, quickly. There should be no basis for comparison in any form, neither in your heart or in your actions. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. There should be no basis of comparison neither in your heart or in your actions you see some wife after a very heated match that the man was the man of the match the woman would just do like just do behave as if the, the, the as if the man was just busy doing offside now the man becomes burdened sometimes to the woman is natural for women men please learn this i'm telling you the sincere truth when you have a wife after intercourse stay with her until she falls asleep just stay by her men write it down never forget it now i'm telling you no these are real truth stay with her until either she falls asleep or you yourself fall asleep because men are champions immediately they often they shake themselves like dog that that poured water on himself and get up and go no stay it's a sign of affection number four that's where we are there should be no okay sorry there should be no basis that's number three so number four as we round up there should be no no there should be consistent upgrade of affection attention and resolve for peace there should be consistent upgrade of affection attention and resolve for peace it makes intimacy easy i say it again there should be consistent upgrade of affection attention and resolve for peace it makes intimacy easy consistent upgrade what did i say consistent what upgrade Hi. Consistent what? Upgrade. Upgrade it. 
Now, why I say upgrade is because when you marry, like when I married my wife, because when I got born again, my dad disowned me. So you shouldn't come to this house again. So I look like a pauper. If you see me, you wouldn't tell. One lady looked at me and said, hmm, can you take care of me? That's what she asked me. Another one saw me said, you have not, you have not put your acts together. That is the way of telling me, I know, I know sure of you. You don't have a future. But what am I saying? But my wife saw me and at that point, she saw that there was something about this young man. And then, that was how we started. It was later she even came to find out that my dad was a wealthy man. It was later she found out. It was later she found out that my dad was even wealthy. And that I'm even the first son. But why am I saying this? When we started then, she bought shoes for me. When we, she bought shoes that we used to wear though. Because she was working at the airport. When I was a missionary. With my slippers and my long flowing gown. Everywhere I go. This uh, Aousa Danchiki, that was what I was doing with spam. Sand slippers. So, but what am I trying to say? As we began to grow, the first time I ever got a car, that was the church, I was given a car, that was in 2007. I took the car and gave to her. Told her drive. I had an official car as a pastor then. So I said, no need to drive the car. No need to. I gave it to her. She was driving it. People went and said she had charmed me. Next time they gave me another car. It, 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 and that, that was in 2010. I gave it to her again. Why? Because I need to upgrade. Today now, there is nothing that I have that she cannot have. There is nothing I have that she can. It, it, it's not, there is nothing. All the preachings I preach and they give me a phone, they give me an iPad, they give me this. I don't even use I give it to her. So you must consistently upgrade your affection. And show attention. Hallelujah. You must upgrade it. Because God himself is upgrading it. You know that when people start, they are little agitations as they grow. When he enters menopause and what have you. That time, you see that it's just the man and the woman that is living like that. Enjoying their life. But all these things, God uses it to train us to be faithful to our spouse. And if you do these things, I believe that God will help you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we rise up on our feet? All these things I said, believe me, they are not possible unless you are connected to the source of love. Because these are the products of love. The way we are laughing and enjoying and uh, doing this thing. If you don't have the love of God in your heart, it cannot work. It will be mechanical. You will be like time losing knot and, and, and boats. Say go. You know the way your mechanic works for you. Say, put this one now. Say, put that. Or you, say, or you both don't have work. They'll just be putting everything. No. Put it. <laughs> have you not noticed it? Mechanic, look at They never. They say, we say, why didn't you put. I say, these people, they don't give them. This is not necessary. It has come to Africa now. So, what I'm saying is, God's love requires for us to open our hearts so that His love will shine. And then from there, we can love we can be able to you see abstinence is not a a resolution thing it is a a connection with the father that sustains you that's how you abstain when the love of god is so much in your heart that you can't allow one piccolo piccolo to just steal into your heart and divert your attention you can't allow one girl to now make you miss church no the love is too much so please this this night as we round up i want to ask you if you know you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, singleness will not be, it, it will be a struggle. You will struggle. You fall out of immorality, fall into calamity, come out, become a liability and things are not just working. But when you go in the power of the love of God and the platform of salvation, then you can make progress and go from being a single to somebody's spouse. That is it. I pray that as you go from here, it, you move. I'm going to ask you, if you know you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, please, all eyes close. 
all eyes closed. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, wherever you are, I want you to just lift up your hands. I will pray for you. We we'll need to call you out tonight. I will pray for you and then I will ask the mighty men to indicate you later who you'll be talked to and then we will now pray. I want to pray for two sets of people and then we are done for the night. Maybe a few questions because time has really gone. I beg your pardon. So if you want to pray, please let me see your hand. Whether you are married or single, please don't look at anybody. All eyes closed. Lift up your hands, please. Where heaven will be seeing it. Anybody in that category? Okay, everybody here is born again. Thank you. We give God praise. Now, I want to pray for singles very quickly. I want to pray for single. If you are single, you know you are eligible and in your heart you are ready to get married. Come forward. I want to pray for you. Now, I, I, every any man, Jesus said that he, the Lord has anointed him to preach the gospel to the captives. I have, by God's grace, the anointing for people, singles to get married. And then number two, I pray for people who desire the fruit of the womb. Hallelujah. I don't know if mama is, is warming up or not, but I want to, if it's okay with you, I'll pray for her. Pray with her. But if not yet, then I know families have plans. Maybe two, three. But if you are here, you are single, but you know you are eligible to get married. Quickly, come, let me pray for you. If you are here, you desire the fruit of the womb. Come, let me pray for you. Quickly. If you are here, you desire the fruit of the womb. You stand this side. But if you are single, come this way. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Please come forward. Yeah, you are married. Good. You are married too. Is he your wife? Oh. Oh, quickly. Are they, is, is this all? Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus. Now, the Bible says in Psalms... In, in Psalm 19, please put it there, verse 5. Psalm 19, verse 5. Is somebody there? Please, Psalm 19, verse 5. So, Psalm, no, Psalm 19, verse 5. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Now, the Bible says that like the bridegroom running out of which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiced as a strong man to run a race. That means there is a place called the bridegroom chamber. All the sisters here, from that chamber, we are asking that your husbands come out. The bridegroom chamber that means there's, there are places where God keeps mighty men that will marry his, his daughters. So please, I want every one of us to be rest assured that by this time next year, we will have multiple weddings. Multiple weddings. Multiple weddings. Multiple weddings. In the name of Jesus. So please, every one of you, just dip your hands in the oil. Just dip your hands. Just small. Touch it. Touch it. Hold it. Touch it, hold it, yes. Touch it, hold it. Yeah, just touch, hold, touch, hold. Quickly, quickly. Because you will anoint yourself. And then the Bible says, On that day shall the yoke be broken. Because of the anointing. Every anti-marital spell, we command that it shall be broken. Today we release you into your homes. Whatever has been spoken into the atmosphere, whatever has been spoken whoever has said that let me see how this one will get married whatever has been said behind or before you we declare that as this oil please everyone stretch your hand towards the altar as this oil touches you every tongue that has risen against you in judgment they are they are condemned and we declare that we speed with speed of lightning every one of you women you begin to run into your husband's house Every spell, every spell of anti -I. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody here look like you have been given engagement drink more than twice. But this time, it will stay in your hands. From engagement, it will become marriage. Lift up your hands. Father, thank you. Let your hand come upon every hand. Let divine direction come. Let spells break. Anti-marital spells break. Burdens, yokes, whatever it is. Now, in the name that is above every other name, we ask that as this oil comes upon their head, let it be the torch of destiny. 
the same way that Rebecca was seen, you are seen. The same way that, Re that Isaac saw Rebecca, you see your own Rebecca. And it becomes a consummation in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that as this oil comes upon you, you become irresistible. He said, and of Asha, let him be acceptable. You become an acceptable wife. You become an acceptable husband. We pray in the name of Jesus that as you live here, quick instant action unction follows you in the name of Jesus. Now pray for yourself. Put your hands on your, just touch yourself. Touch yourself, touch yourself. Pray, Kapalash. Please let the congregation pray with us. Kabadosh. Inakobara, Shadas. Yes, Kapale Karash. Ido Zabre Kelo Boshatas. I Kapala Kora Padash. Intentions of the heart of men broken. Ida Bora Kedo Zwala Kora Pash. That Ye Kora Deziadosh. In Kotola Kera Badash. Thank you, Jesus. Vale Kora Badash. Ino Dobra Gela Bragadia. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is done. I just saw a chameleon spirit. It can be something that looks like look at this let me try to describe it now the person sees you as good tomorrow the person sees you as as bad sees you as immoral sees you as a christian and it looks like it's a manipulation but today every of such manipulations kabadosh they are set on fire 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 in the name of jesus they are set on fire in the name of jesus there's somebody who is, who is I, I, I just say you're watching online or I don't know, but listen to this. He, he, you, the person had a dream where it looked like it was between you and who you were going to get married to. Get married to and then it crashed. It looked like an accident. And that, that relationship just looked like strange things began to happen. But we demand for restoration. We demand for restoration. In the name of Jesus. We demand for restoration. In the name of Jesus. We demand for restoration in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We demand for restoration in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Is anybody called Anto here? Anto. Anto. Like Antonio or something. Okay. But we are online. Then I, I guess he must be online. Now, this person has a car. I don't know what type of car is it, but the, the, the car is the number is GX1293 BD. Now, he, he's, he, he, he has a relationship that I thought is a friendly relationship, but it's a snare that wants to trap him. It's a snare that wants to trap his destiny. But we intercede for him. His name is Anthony, but he's often called Anto. Anto. It is broken. In the name of Jesus, it is broken. In the name of Jesus. It is broken. Yes, the oil, please. Father, we pray. Please, could you hold your hands? Could you hold your hands? Yes. So, touch oil. Yeah, touch oil. Father, we declare, in the name of Jesus, grace to receive conception. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Grace, in the name of Jesus, grace to receive seed. Uh, mama please mama come please so that too. mama please be fast come thank you please put your hands behind her back no behind her back hold her behind her no no okay hold your wife we are not the priest we are <laughs> <laughs> mama please put your hand on her shoulders yes two shoulders father we ask the same mantle that gave your daughter conception we ask that it be released to her delay is over delay is over grace to receive seed grace to retain seed and after three trimesters grace to release seed in the name of jesus the same way eli said go and the lord give you seed i pray go and nine months from today come back with your testimony in the name of jesus thank you father can we jam our hands together for jesus can we jam our hands together for jesus please can we jam our hands together for Jesus? Congratulations. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations. 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 Oh, lift up your hands and give God praise. Lift up your hands and give God
lift up your hands and just bless God. Let's thank him for this word, please. One word. One word that he has sent across to us. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Whilst we are standing, please stretch forth your hands towards the man of God. Lord, replenish. Restore him. Increase him. Let the anointing upon his life multiply. Let the mantles he need for our generation be released upon him in the mighty name of Jesus. And as he's anointed in this area among other areas, cause him to be a shining light there. May the enemy never attack him necessary anointing to overcome reprisal attacks in jesus mighty name amen please have your seat and give the lord a powerful clap a powerful clap a powerful clap <laughs> hallelujah i don't think we can recover from tonight amen and amen the um, the service was recorded and so um, we shall the service is available media I think um, please media do we have media do we have the praisezion.com Yeah, I don't know. 